Well, not very successful with old uh, um, BH. She didn't come off the nest. Just gone out there to try and encourage her off the nest and feed her and her babies. I've only been in the house for about 20 minutes. And blow me, she decided she was going to leave her babies then. Three eggs in the nest, one dead baby, which I thought was going to be the case because uh, I heard one growling yesterday. And she didn't move, she didn't shift her weight. And I thought we we're going to have a fatality in the nest, and I was right, there was. One poor little one, a nice big guinea fowl too, baby guinea fowl. Well and truly squashed. Three eggs. This one partly hatched and unable to get out because he's upside down. Well, I think. I don't know. And two that hadn't even pipped externally. I don't think they pipped internally. Oh, no, you're not upside down. There you go, baby. There you go. Right. Yeah. Let's put you back in the hatcher. Okay. Not in the hatcher. You can keep it, keep you warm. Okay. So there he is. I don't know if he's going to survive. He's not too dried out. He was well and truly stuck in the in the shell. There was no way he could get his head out, poor little love. But whether he'll survive or not, who knows? He's also got cold. So he may well be chilled and get pneumonia and die anyway. The other two, I've. I quickly candled, but I'm going to let them warm through and see if there's any hope with those. See if they're dead or alive. Obviously, if they're alive, I'll keep a, a very vigilant eye on them. If they're dead, then that'd be that. That's egg over the back there. That's egg number 12 from. He's not going to do very well, I don't think. We're, we're waiting for him to warm up and recover a little and see what happens. I may cover that side so there's no daylight in a minute, so he'll be in the dark. But I'll do that now. With a bit of wood just to keep him slightly in the dark. But, uh, Little Prince, what do you think you're doing? I don't want you coming out of your box. You're going to fly down there and fall on the floor. Yes, you are. Oh, it's all happening today. But uh, his hips are going to be naff. So he'll be, have to be under the light in a box for 24 hours. The others seem to be okay. But uh, that's not very good. I'll have to do it with a towel. Um, yeah, so we'll check those in a couple of hours when they've warmed up to see if there's any movement or not. Real shame. So I don't even know how many she's got now, I think she's on 14 or 15, but not good. But there we have it. It's when you let nature take charge of itself. And I've been watching her. I was watching her all yesterday afternoon. I've been watching her all morning. And she decides to go off the nest the very time I come in to get another light bulb. So she's got a bit of extra light in there. And <laughs> have a quick cup of tea and feed the, the pigeon there. And go straight back out. And then she decides to leave the nest. Typical, absolutely typical. But such is life. So that little person there was the one that I rescued from her yesterday. For some reason it was caught by its foot on a couple of feathers on her leg, up on her leg. They're very soft feathers, very short feathers, so how on earth it got wrapped up in her feathers there, I don't know, but it was hanging by one leg, I don't know how long it had been hanging there. So I managed to free it. Poor little soul, didn't know what on earth had happened, it didn't know where it was, brought it in with another one for company for it and put it under the lamp for about five hours. It's it recovered from its ordeal. 
you know, it straightened up, it stood up, it could walk forward without falling down on its side. Where's he gone? But he is very, 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 or she is very, very, very much smaller than the others. And uh, his breathing doesn't seem to be too good, but they're hanging upside down. For, there it is, poor little soul. Hanging up upside down for heaven knows how many hours from its mother's leg, feathers. I don't know if it's sustained irreversible damage or not, but it seems to be feeding okay, but it's not the best. Well, it's not going to be, is it? So I think that would be another loss, which would be tragic. But again, as I say, that's what happens when you leave it to nature, survival of the fittest and all that, but unforeseen circumstances that nature creates but can't resolve herself and innocent little lives are lost through no fault of their own. So that's where the human race comes in and tries to correct it. I've always said that if nothing was meant to, if something was not meant to be, even though I'll save it and nurture it and deal with it and it'll go on, it won't make old bones. It'll die at a young age and that was the, the story with every lamb and calf that that I sorted out. Nature obviously had other ideas and I would say to my kids and to my husband then this won't make old bones and I was right. They would be dead before they reached maturity for one reason or another. Every single one of them is the same in the guineas. And so they're like sheep, they do one thing very well and that's just die. Tough as hell, but they will just die. So we'll see on that score where she's concerned now. Let's have a look at the rest. Old no tail. You're doing well, aren't you, dear? Yes, I've got to clean you out. Yes, I clean these out three times a day with me flower pot and rubber glove. Now, it's all right, Guinness, you're going out in a second. Yes, I know, I'm late today. There she is, I'm going to try and... That little light up there is what I use as a folding light. It's only got a, a 25 watt bulb, so I'm going to be changing that to a 40 watt bulb and pull it over a little so she's got some, some light because it is very dark in there. This lot are doing fine. Only two weeks old. You're doing well, aren't you, moldy old girl? It fell up being in here. I know, I'm trying to think of somewhere where to put you so you can go out. This bunch of renegades, eh? Where's this? Where's number six? Oh, there she is, there. I'm sure that's a little female. It's always on its own, doing its own thing. Aren't you, dear? My little turkey's doing well, there he is. I'm doing well, aren't you? Nice big full crop. You're growing now, so catching up with brother or sister there. So let's deal with this light. Well, old BA just come out. I mean, led her babies. So I'll, I'll shut up. I'll start again. She's led her babies to food. She's having a pick herself. That's good. She's the only the second one, Morden and her are the only two that decided they would eat the egg and show their babies where it was. Old No Tail decided that she wasn't going to do that and she was going to go another day and wait for me to bring in the, the mash. So she's got 14 babies there. It sounds like my mouths are fighting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, I've got one that I've got in the incubator survives. That'd be 15. And so she had 18 eggs. So perhaps next year I'll put guinea fowl eggs under chickens and chicken eggs under turkeys because chicks are obviously twice the size of guinea fowl babies but chickens don't make half so good mothers as what turkeys do. I mean they are so slow, they are so gentle, they are so considerate. They really are fantastic mothers. Even old Maud, who completely failed with her own babies last year, but I say that that is because of my fault because I left Morris in there. I didn't take him out until it was too late. But 
I don't know there, dear. It's not very pleasant there. It's cold. Back to your bed. But I, sp I suppose she started hatching, what will be today, Thursday? Friday. Friday today, I think. Yes, Friday. They're due to hatch today. She started hatching, I think it was Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. So she has been on the nest long enough. Oh, there's a good girl. See, they're, they're, they're such considerate mums. They're, they're so gorgeous. But look at the size of those little babies. I mean, they are so incredibly tiny. The size of a turkey. So a chicken's much better bet, but... Chickens are good mothers for the first four or five weeks, and after that, they... I, I get very cross with them because they reject their babies. They don't want them anywhere near them. They're not even fully feathered, and they decide they're, they're not going to eat, they're not going to do this, they're not going to do that, they're not going to be allowed. They're not going to be allowed to snuckle in, and they're certainly not going to be allowed any of their food. Mum's need is much greater, whereas a turkey won't do that. They take it to the, take their babies to the food, show them the food, eat a bit with them, and then stand back, watch them, make sure they're all eating, but stand back and let them eat on their own, like old Maud here. They haven't got much food left there. They're going to need the second breakfast, aren't you? Because you're a load of gannets, you lot, but she'll go and have three or four mouthfuls and then leave it to her babies. You want out, don't you, dear? I know, you want out. And as you can see, they clear the dish. Three times a day I feed them. I eat them out of house and home, and it only gets worse. It sounds like, as I say, my males are having a, a set two up here, so we'll go have a look. I don't know why, because I don't think that turkey's that female's going to think about laying. If she does, I'll utilise her to brood some more. You pathetic bunch. I know you're still in. Because I'm cleaning out the babies, and I don't want to contaminate them with anything I might pick up in your stable. Because you're disgustingly filthy. There's only three of you in here, but by heavens, you're filthy. Oh, yeah, she's laying again. Look what I see over there. That's why they're fighting. So I think we are going to remove her from the equation. Don't quite know where I'm she, she couldn't care, then. She's saying, yeah, these stupid boys are just doing the typical males. I'm not going to take any notice. I'm just going to preen myself. So good, she's laying again. So excellent, I'll keep an eye on where she's laying. And then I'll put her in a stable and hope that she goes broody. Put her on chicken eggs. Although the chickens have slowed down their laying now, which is a pain, that's absolutely typical. So I'll save, save the eggs from now on and uh, keep them in the, in the playroom. Yes, you're pathetic. Uh, so, oh, that's good. It, it's although they're being pathetic, it's good that she's laying again. Means I won't have to kill her. Yay! Because we don't want to do that, do we, dear? No. So you can be a chicken rearer. Yes, you can. You can rear baby chicks. Let's we'll see how you go with that. Oh, shut up, you two. Yes, I'm gonna let you out in a minute. You right, dear? So little old No Tail, because of her size, was the only one that hasn't as yet. I'm not going to say it because if I say it, it's, it'll happen. Hasn't uh, had a, a mishap with her size or her feet and discombobulated one of her babies. I'll say it like that, then, then perhaps it won't happen. Um, and hatched every single one out. Was on the nest for two days, waited, came out. Third day, didn't bother to eat. Her babies didn't bother to eat. Fourth day, right, where's my mash? We're eating that, and that's that. Say so egg number 12 is nothing to do with her whatsoever. That seemed to be quite a bit behind the others. I say, I think it died yesterday. I left it in the incubator overnight. I haven't checked it today, but I'm pretty convinced it's dead, and that's five days after, after everybody else has hatched. But it was still alive, and it was still growing. It's doubled in size. It's filled up most of the egg. God, you really are sad. Right, let's get this. I su suspect that other people have got turkey, male turkeys fighting before, but... Do this very slow dancing around and they feet and beaks. Evil devils, they really are. 
they're so gentle with, with humans and everything else, but they really are evil when it comes to two males and one female. She still couldn't care less. She's still preening herself. She couldn't care less. She's... You, th you think you're all that, don't you? Two males fighting over you? Yeah, you do. So perhaps we'll get rid of one of these. There you go. Nasty. And everything goes flying. Feeders, drinkers, other turkeys, you name it, it goes flying. Their perches there go flying. I even witnessed one knocking over a block and how it didn't kill itself and, and the, its sparring partner, I don't know. I think I'm going to let these out. Let's see if they resume outside, which they will do. Oh, she still couldn't kill her. She's out, but these aren't coming out. Well, the one with the tile had his 10 minutes of solitary confinement. She's going to get damaged with this shite going on. And everything was peaceful and calm, but as you can see now, it's not peaceful and calm. She's gone off screaming. So it's not going to work, I shall have to kill one of them tomorrow. So I don't want to interfere too much with the arrangement because I don't want to put her off lay. So I want the excuse not to have to kill her. So I want her to go broody, so I want her to continue laying. But two males, one female. All the time she wasn't laying, no problem. But now it's going to cause a big problem and she's going to end up getting hurt too. One of them jumps on her and then the other one fights, she's going to be the one that gets hurt. So. It really isn't going to work. I can't kill one of them today because they've had their breakfast, so. And with making all the damn noise, it's aggravating the other females in here. So, all very aggravating. But I'll think about it, I might take the one with more tile out again later on and uh, stick him in the stable and maybe kill him tonight. Maybe. Don't really feel like it with violent toothache and the weather as it is, it's not cool. So I won't be able to hang the meat, the carcass, so that's really going to hack me off. It's going to be an absolute pain to pluck because they're in the middle of shedding feathers so just to add to the joys of life well i've removed the, the one with the more feathers on his tail as this is the one that's number one he seems a bit heavier than that one and number two he seems to be the one that uh, she prefers so i'll leave him with her for the duration and when she stops lying and goes broody he'll uh, be killed too so I'll kill the other male maybe tonight 
which I will video so you can see how I do it. I'll say it's done with love, gentleness, but with the utmost respect for them. They don't suffer. They don't panic. They d <coughs> don't really know, know what's going on. Um, and that's that. I hate doing it anyway, but to do it that way is acceptable to me. And it's the only way that's acceptable to me. If I couldn't do it the way I do it, then uh, I just wouldn't do it. And I wouldn't have anybody else do it for me either. If I can't do the job myself, I certainly wouldn't ask anybody else. I have asked the neighbour to, to kill off the ducks for me before because I wasn't doing it the way I do it now. But uh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't kill them. There's no way I could kill them. Chickens, roosters. Uh, I had to psych myself up for a week before I did it and then I'd have to put myself into a I'm not here trance and I'll transport myself somewhere else to do it. <coughs> I messed up twice. The, the rooster was dead, but just the fact that I messed up was, a, was enough to put me off for life. Uh, just chopping heads off, I couldn't do that. But then I had to kill two guinea fowl um, males and they're absolutely impossible to, to, to kill. They, they won't, well, they're not impossible to kill, but they won't keep still, they won't do this, they won't, they won't. Oh, you know, a rooster, you can put a string around its head and on, around its neck, put a, a cloth over its head, stick it on the block and that's it, done. But a guinea fowl, no, they panic, they scream, they kick, they thrash. It's absolutely horrific. Then I was looking up how to, to kill small animals humanely and I saw vinegar and bicarbonate of soda, so I tried that. And I killed another three guinea fowl that way, which was fine. They, they died peacefully, quietly, no worries, no fighting, no struggling, no nothing. But it took about 20 minutes for them to actually die. Um, before I cut their heads off, so it's, that wasn't the best. So, good old Soda Stream comes to the rescue, and uh, away we go. So, well, thanks to my son, my oldest son, who knew the problem and took the initiative. Thank you, my love. Brilliant. So, there we are. So, that's that. <coughs> He's not very happy in here. He's got water, I haven't given him any food. He wouldn't have cleared out by tonight, but. The hen seems to be doing fine in there. Oh, where's that thing? He's there, you can't really see him. It's dark, it's not fair, but there we are. That's my excuse to get rid of another one and lighten the load a bit more. And I'll say then the other mile ago, you're doing all right, do you? Yeah? Got your little light now up there? It's going in the other stable as well a bit, but... It is giving her some light because it was quite dark in here. They haven't eaten much of their egg, but you're right, old girl. Oh, do you do so one out, don't you? Well, okay. Well, let me sort out your daughter, get her brooding on chicken eggs, and that'll be her out of the way. Kill off the other male, and then you can ask, sterilize all up there, clean all that, and. Sterilise it all and then you can go up there with your babies and they can, you can go out. You can go in the caravan and I've got them outside as well, out in the pig house. Do that today too. Yeah, we've got to let it clean though. We've got to let it clean and air for at least three days. We've got to lime it all because I don't want my turkeys coming into contact with other chicken poop. Even though they're wormed continuously with the herbs and the garlic and the apple cider vinegar, just in case. Don't want to lose me any two tokens I've got. Right.